John Phillips in with us. No, K N O W, the lawyer.com. And John is getting a lot of calls up here, people needing some legal help. See anything up there that's uh, out of the ordinary? Something that's uh, kind of fun to deal with? Yeah, let's, Whatever let's, hit that, let's hit that uh, right to work issue just because yeah, we, need we were that. talking about it. Um, Patrick, what's up? Yeah, John, I was just curious because you had mentioned earlier to the contractor guy that uh, he could be fired for the color of his shirt. And you always have these conversations with the folks you work with. You're in a right to work state which basically implies that the employee has no rights. It's all the employers. I was just wondering if you can break that down, explain what right-to-work state means. Sure, the, the, and there's two things here. There's, there's right-to-work state. Usually when people use the term right-to-work, what it, it's a little different than employment at will. Right-to-work is, is usually used in the context of, like in Florida, you have the right to elect not to be a part of a union. Um, it's more the term, the expression "right to work" more is, is is about whether or not you're you're required to be in a union, and in Florida, you're not. It's a right to work state. There's also the concept of employer employee at will, and that means that you're hired. And in most states in the United States, you're hired, and it doesn't matter. You can be terminated at the will of that employer. You know whether it's walmart or whoever and they don't have to give a reason now they can't terminate you for any discriminatory reason and you know we were kind of talking off air about you know you can't it's it's bad in some circumstances for an employer to even give a reason because it only opens up scrutiny but generally they can terminate you for any reason whatsoever at any time unless you have an employment contract and that's why if, if you're if you have the leverage to be able to get a contract get it in writing that's always best all right so in a, in a state like that there's no way for anything like uh, unlawful termination at all not unless not unless you have a contract you know and, and you know if you've if you've got something where you know you've got them held to an agreement that's one thing but otherwise if you're just going to work for somebody and they decide that you know you you just weren't putting in the effort they don't have to give a reason you're you know you're out i thought right to work state was more like uh like confident um not confidentiality agreements what am i thinking here but but a not compete and stuff like that you know like if somebody fires you and you have like uh want to go to work for another radio station and right. they, they've the, given you no benefits no nothing that's all within that's all within an agreement and in a yeah. covenant not to compete situation you know you, you got to look at it and, and i review those you know going into for employers but it's got to be within a limited scope you can't say all right now lex and terry if, if you leave us you can't broadcast in the entire united states the judges say no 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 you got to leave it within 50 mile within radius 50 mile of the radius, city yes. or whatever's reasonable depending upon the type of employment yeah all right let's go to lisa real quick. Lisa, you're on Lex and Terry. This sounds funny to me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it sounds funny to me too. Um, hey guys, I'm a long time listener, first time caller. My question is, um, I gave my ex-husband a thousand dollars to buy his truck for my son for graduation, which is this Sunday. And a week later, his truck was stolen. Now I'm trying to get my money back from him and I'm getting this big run around. He's moved to Florida. He had a wreck. He lost everything. He went in the hospital. I have the duplicate check, and I was wondering if I have grounds to sue him. Wait, who stole it? Who stole the truck? Am I missing something? Uh, yeah. He don't yeah. know. They they haven't found it. Okay, so so just because the truck the truck you bought they bought your money helped bought was stolen, you want your money back? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. The uh, you know the it, it's called risk of loss, and you know once once something's yours, if if it goes missing, uh, it's you 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 unfortunately have the risk of loss, and so there's nobody yeah. that I can see just off the facts to to sue unless was, y'all heard something I did. Was the truck in, was the truck insured by you? No, no, no. I think you don't understand. It was his truck. It was my ex husband's truck. Right. And my. And my son wanted it for a present. So you mm-hmm. bought it for him, which which I was, make, which, I was giving him. I didn't give him all the money. I gave him half the money mm-hmm. for him to send me the title. Well, I was waiting on the title to get here, and the truck was stolen in the meantime. He's in Indiana. I'm in Georgia. 
Well, that's a weird yeah, circum. It's a very strange and weird circumstance. Yeah, very. Yes. And and I don't know. You know, it's it really depends on where everything kind of <laughs> hit. I'm I'm kind of yeah. confused on this one. Um, so you paid him the money and he cashed the check. Half I paid him the money for the truck. He took um, eight hundred dollars of that money and put it into the truck for my son. He put a new stereo system in it, this, that, and the other, and he was actually going to drive it down here for him on graduation and surprise him. And the truck got stolen. It sounds fishy. Well, it does sound fishy. Yeah, yeah especially fishy if he's having money problems and all kinds of stuff like that. I bet that truck wasn't stolen. And I bet he didn't take that money and put anything in that truck. I think that truck was just said, hey, you can pick it up over here. It's, and he's got your money. He doesn't have to come up with a truck that's got improvements I'd, on it. I'd, I'd, I'd get a private eye on yeah. this one. What I what you should do is ask for a police report. You know, make him there do the go. work to file that's the police why we report. Have an attorney. Yeah. And uh, if he files a fraudulent police report, he's, that's a felony. Um, so you know, get the police report. You make him dot the i's and cross the t's, if you will. And and uh, and why isn't there a police report already? And if he right, had, right. if he had insurance, maybe the insurance would have been covered because it was you know whoever owned the property at the time. If the title hadn't been transferred, there may be some insurance there. But um, he didn't have insurance. Yeah, it's all, right. it's all fishy. It looks mm. bad. Get it. the police report thing's a great idea, don't you think, Lisa? Yeah, it, it sounds really good to me. I just and, wish my son would have a graduation uh, present, but now he don't. Well, <laughs> watch, let's start. Watch yeah, the well. watch the tap dancing when you ask him for the police report. Right. Just okay. All right. Luckily, he has his dad's genetics five, and graduated. Number five, <laughs> Tiffany. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, babe. Um, well, my question is, yesterday I was in walking to a store, and it had been raining out. There was a rug, you know, as walking into the door. Um, in front of the rug, apparently there was a wet spot, but there was no, you know, caution sign or anything. And I fell and busted my behind. Um, there, there was a little cashier girl that saw me, and she just didn't do anything, still didn't put a caution sign up, didn't want to um, file an incident report. I had to actually call the manager and go back up there. Oh, my God. Are you okay? I'm okay. My oh, well, then who cares? Still. There it is, right there. Then shut up. Listen, see, this is where it is. I mean, I I know this is what John could, you know, there are legitimate cases as far as this goes. I know that, but there are so many pussies in this world. I am so sorry. I hate people like this. Slip and falls are tough. You know, slip and falls are really tough. I've I've tried a couple, and there, you know, it's you all. There's always comparative negligence in a slip and fall. You you always could have been a little safer unless you know a manhole cover is defective and cracks in two or, or isn't isn't in place so if you're if you're okay you know if you have injuries that's a whole nother n- another issue but do you have injuries um i went to the er last night and i pulled a muscle in my back oh my god we don't believe it was you. raining <laughs> we don't believe I have you four children and i can't pick up my children because of it oh, well stop man. having kids yeah. man you take a, your legs take an ibuprofen and shut up Seriously, so you're a liar. Oh, God. Listen, you're just trying to you get some f- money from Seven yeah. Eleven. Shut up! Wasting some frivolous our lawsuit. Time. I hate you. The people hate people like you. You Piece know why? Because you 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 just hold up the justice system. I'll break your back, Ooh. Terry. Terry's just laughing at me. Just I I, I can't I, I I can't get a word in edgewise. And and I'm not, that, you know <laughs> you it's it's a tough to. it, exactly. It's like how do I even get into this one? Um, I'm the one that picked the caller, and. Uh, <laughs> And saw slip and fall. I got a little excited, but uh, but <laughs> so it's, did I. It's it, it's a little tough in your situation, Tiffany. You know, get the accident report. Maybe call a local attorney. See if they can help you. Um, you know, I'm sure Their there's attorneys the, are supposed to be calling me. You today. shut up, Tiffany. I'm gonna tell you yeah. how this is gonna go. John is yeah. your attorney. I'm the grocery store attorney. Uh, you sure it wasn't baby juice dripping down your leg that you slipped on? <laughs> huh, huh, Tiffany? Here's what here's what Counselor, you're out of order. Here's the problem with this. I so object. let me see here. What time did you slip and fall, Tiffany? Uh yesterday at about two PM. And then you went to the emergency room last night. What kind of shoes yes. were you wearing? If you say heels, uh, we're in trouble. No, I don't wear heels. Okay. 
Uh, I don't <laughs> like even more. Have you ever uh, have you ever had any former uh, anything legal before you've been involved in? No, I have not. Have you did it with any of your children? Did you get an epidural, the shot in the back? Yes. How you know yeah, that your no, back isn't come on. defraudulent? <laughs> fr- 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 come on, <laughs> your back ain't we messed all, up from that counselor. epidural. Do you think we could be great <laughs> attorneys? <laughs> No, I mean, there, there's a case there. It's 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 you know it, it, they're gonna apportion some fault on you, but you know there may have should have been signs, but you know like Ian said, it was raining. You know there was a rug down, um, unless that rug was saturated. You know there's there's they've got to do they have a duty to check, um, but it's you know slip and fall cases are are so tough. You in Florida now at least, and I, I think maybe in South Carolina you've actually got to prove notice of defect, not that they should have known but that they knew there was a problem. And so, you know, in grocery store environments, it's it's tough because you've got spilled milk, and if they didn't know, um, somebody's going to make a joke about crying over it, but no. if, uh, if you know, if they didn't know that the spilled milk was down, they, you know, they they, got, they have a reasonable well, opportunity. Good luck, all right. Listen, I know there's legitimate things like that, but don't, don't you, how many people would you say call you just looking for a buck? When I was at my former firm, which was one of those big mill type advertising uh-huh. firms, we got those all the time. I turned those cases down. Yeah, you know, I take serious injuries. You know, I get a lot of auto cases more than slip and falls because slip and falls, man. There's almost always an element of mm-hmm. of you should have done a little bit more to prevent yeah. this fall. And I, I've I've had a, the last one of the last trials I had at that former firm was a slip and fall at a major hospital and. And a jury just lit us up on, yeah. you know, self responsibility. So, yeah, I mean, it's a tough thing, and there are people that legitimately accidents happen to them due to the neglect of uh, the other party. We get it, uh, but if you just like, you know, you go to McDonald's and your French fry is too hot, and you're eh, you're a bitch. Yeah, that hot coffee case just pissed me no, off. No, it's like no, let's let's have you seen the documentary on it? No. No, I don't need to see it. You're ordering hot coffee, and there it is. Well, it spilled all over. They spilled it, it on top of her. Well, she, she no, they didn't. She spilled. She put it in her own lap. Okay. But if you see the, I'll show you before I'm we. Sorry, leave. she did what? The she she spilt it. Hmm. But McDonald's had. They to, didn't throw it on. They use such cheap beans that they had to boil them at I think 200 degrees, which is 20 degrees over standard. They kept it at 190 degrees, so it was hotter because McDonald's used cheap beans. And she literally incinerated inches off of her leg. Like her skin was melted off so to the like point they diet. had to do major skin grafts. Oh. And uh, it's it's pretty disgusting stuff. You know, th- those lawsuits are about accountability. And McDonald's since, you know, lowered the temperature that they keep their coffee at. Yeah. All right. you know, and they had like 700 complaints beforehand. So, oh. you know, every one of so them. So they knew that there was probably a problem. They knew there was a problem. Okay.